Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Sustainability for Good workshop. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of you who are here, who are very uh, on time and prompt. And um, the fact that you are here on a Saturday morning and when all it's a weekend, it's a holiday school weekend as well. Um, it means that it means a lot to not just not just uh, us, but also uh, yourselves and what you are uh, committed to improve about yourselves and your own lives. Yeah, and uh, but. Before before we begin, we'll do a quick round first with whoever is here in the room. I'd love to hear um, your your name, your um, your business, or your income. A little bit about you and what? Why are you here today? That that would be quite interesting for us to know as well. We'll start with Kai, the person who first came into the room. Go ahead, Kai. Kai, are you there? Yeah, please introduce yourself and uh, just share a little bit about you. Yes or no? <laughs> oh, all right. So can I invite Clement right now? Clement, say, say hello. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm, hi, I'm Clement. Uh, I've, I've been following Mr. Mashida for years already and I'm and and I do like to hear about their business. Their their their. I do like to hear about their their, their workshop and their business. And today I come to this to this workshop is to learn more about sustainability and how it can help me. Um, as I as I go about doing my own my own my own business my own thing. So thank you. Yeah. Awesome, Clement. Thank you. And over to Ian. Ian, please introduce yourself. What do you do? And love to hear why you are here. Hi. Good morning. To both you uh, and Zil. Um, yeah, I'm, I have known both of you since uh, Money and You. Yeah, so it's been good to uh, get to hear what you have, what you've been doing. And uh, myself, I'm working in, in, uh, in Shah Alam. Yeah, I work as an IT manager in a public listed company. And uh, yeah, I'm just here to join you in the fun. Thank you. That's great. And nice to meet you again, Ian, after so long. And uh, and, and we're, we're very happy to be in touch. And so that's the one thing good about uh, the online um, media as well, because, you know, through Facebook, we get to keep in touch, WhatsApps, emails, that's how we can, you know, we don't lose touch of each other and we know what, you know, uh, your developments are as well. Yeah? And uh, the, the Zoom space is also for us to meet in person, face to face, and also be able to catch up as well. So this is awesome. Now over to Farida. Welcome, Farida. Please introduce yourself. What do you do and why are you here? Welcome. Good morning. I've been away from our, our team Zoom for the longest time. Sorry, so tied up. Okay, I'm Farida Jamal from Singapore. I uh, happen to wear my uncle t-shirt. <laughs> okay, I am the, what my friend has used, has called me and has been my trademark. I'm the uncle queen of Singapore, queen with a W because of the quality key is easier to type and queen W is easier. Uh, more unique, yeah. All right, so I've been in uh, Angklong teaching since, wow, I think more than half my life. Uh, so about uh, since I left school, I did part-time, went back to my old school to teach Angklong, and then I went full-time in 1993. So um, very much a solopreneur uh, in about, when was this? About 2009, 08, I brought, I went to Bandung, to Indonesia. Bandung is this, is the home of the Angklung. Uh, is a, is, this is a very ancient instrument. Uh, so the Bandung people are very strong in this. So I brought two of them to join my company. So there were three of us, but now they are now, they just got their <coughs> PR. So I'm back to being alone, but then I collaborate. So I'm doing a lot more collaborating with other ethnic music groups. Uh, we're, we're getting bigger. Uh, there's this group called Angklung Empire and I'm going for afternoon practice later. And then, yeah, so I hope to bring either just me or my whole team to KL or any part of Malaysia. And I know my Sabah Sarawak friends are uh, so excited to have Uncle on board. Yes, thank you so much. Nice meeting you guys. Hey, wonderful. Okay, uh, Marwan is here. Marwan, are you able to speak? Please introduce yourself and why are you here? Hi, good morning. My name is Marwan. I'm from Yemen. 
I'm staying in Malaysia as a refugee, or maybe uh, you can see like it's uh, asylum seeker because it's not approved yet. Though I've been like a refugee in another country, but uh, here is very cozy. So uh, I have an idea like for my business, uh, actually I'm working on it uh, it's, uh, for teaching Arabic classes and uh, trying like to do my best. It's not easy, but uh, we need to keep up like the high spirit. Thank you for your help and for everyone for attending. Thank you. Wonderful, Marwan. So happy to, uh, that you're here as well. Okay, and what we're going to do right now is we're going to go into um, this topic on sustainability for good and why we are doing this. So I'm just going to go share my screen right now. And um, okay, so today is we will be addressing uh, why sustainability and uh, how you can start, um, what can you do, and these are the areas that we will be um, touching on a little bit today. Okay, so um, some of most of you here already know who we are, right? Zila and Moshida, uh, and we believe so much in this this tagline, and this came out from the branding that we did last year when when our branding consultants was looking at us and what is the tagline that really represents the essence of our company and our business and the way we do life right and it is from small things big things grow because a lot of people they said i have big dreams i want to do this and that but i cannot because i don't have money i don't have capital i don't have this and that actually everything starts with little or no resources and we started like that as well we started with very little <laughs> or no resources as well to creating the things that we are doing right now and this is how we support our people and our clients on how they can start creating their vision their dreams and their lifestyles the way they want to from little or no resources yeah so our mission is to eradicate poverty uh, accelerate success in business and Life by providing long-term quality education and mentorship. So our values include compassion, sincerity, and especially love and respect. We always love showing this picture because this is one of the one of our uh, highlights of the work that we do, where we could uh, provide hearing aids for a refugee child, um, actually two refugee children who have not been list, they couldn't hear for many many years, right? So when we started to uh, sponsor uh, the the hearing aids, this is actually the time when the son could actually hear the mother speak for the first time after a long, long time. So it was very heartwarming. You can go to our YouTube to also see the video of the, the, the host, um, you know, how, how they um, experience the, the hearing aid as well. So this is this one of our highlights as well in our, in our work. And more recently also is um, the distribution of food, especially for those um, during Ramadan who are living in poverty um, and this is our community leader you know within the refugee community to support us in our work as well in food distribution to those who are really really uh, you know uh, in poverty yeah and um, today's topic is on why we talk about sustainable lifestyle and before that I'd like to share a little bit about how we kind of evolved with love and respect and I, I believe this year this is a time that we really need to address on sustainability. In the past, we've talked a lot about um, how uh, love and respect is important to your life, in business, and this is the time let's make that sustainable. Let's make love and respect sustainable in your life and once you leave this earth as well, okay? So uh, before I go into this, I just want to share with you a little backstory of how we all came about to where we are right now. So Ian, who has met us, you know, a long time ago, um, yeah, that was that was really at the beginning of how we got into some certain ideas. Now, Zil and I, when we first started our business, we came from a space of um, realizing there's a lot of lack in love and respect, not enough love and respect in business, in family, in organizations, in schools, in relationships, and it's a lot to do with. What is it for me? And even in business, we were taught about how customers, when we deal with customers, we always ask what's in it for me in, in their perspective, what's in it, you know, when, when customers are, are there, they always ask what's in it for me, right? So somehow that is not sustainable when everybody has that mindset of what's in it for me. And that's why we started introducing love and respect. And when I first started talking about love and respect, uh, a lot of resistance, especially in the business world. They couldn't receive it. It's like business, 
company, love and respect just does not gel. But we started it anyway. And, and of course, we changed certain topics. So instead of um, uh, love and respect, we use the word customer service excellence, organizational excellence, team bonding, words that people understand, right? And even now, when we talk about sustainability, a lot of people don't understand the importance. They don't understand what is sustainability. But we find that it is crucial right now to start introducing this topic and this term and it must be incorporated into people's lives okay so in 2008 uh we started with uh, the topic on love and respect and somehow you know by word of mouth and me talking to people through networks um i i got into corporate training and started to to share about love and respect and as you can see this is one of my early ones early training i did for giant you know back then we, we were covering all of giant all over malaysia right to train the staff but that was the first one of the first um organizations that i started along with the department of statistics here in malaysia as well i started talking about love and respect in events yeah so from there that was how my business grew a lot of people knew me and still know me as a corporate trainer and that is fine because that is what i do i do corporate training uh, with the values of love and respect in all areas of topics yeah that they want me to address so um i've i've done uh, businesses we've done we covered a lot of countries as well including brunei malaysia singapore uh indonesia i've done in uh, also in us as well to speak as well um and on all talking about the values of love and respect yeah and that from that time when we were doing doing our corporate training and teaching people um, about love and respect, uh, teaching couples also on love and respect. Um, Zil and I started to incorporate also our values of giving uh, into our family. We started with our family first, right? So we visited orphanages, brought my daughter at that time, she was a toddler, brought her around uh, to orphanages, play with the other orphans. And uh, we started sharing this as an example where people should incorporate giving as part of their lifestyle instead of going to the mall all the time over weekends, why not bring your family to do good? And our team started to grow. People started to notice and they wanted to join us, uh, do, do homeless street feeding, visit all orphanages, uh, visit the poor. And this is what we, we encourage people to do anyway. So that's how we, we got into the actual giving. But it was not in business. It was separate at that time when we did, um, you know, visiting orphanages. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, yeah, we visited orphanages, but at the same time, we also did business. We didn't really integrate the two, but we did advise people, go do your giving, bring your family to, to orphanages and all that, right? Uh, and somehow we found that as we start to do this, um, we made friends with some homeless people and over two or three years, they are still homeless or they are still poor. And we're like, and we're still giving to them. And we're like, are we really helping them? No, we are not. We are keeping them poor by them expecting us to give them all the time. They see us as a channel of, of uh, donations, you know. Um, and a lot of people still do. They still they still not uh, uh, you know uh, see me as a channel for donation, which is fine with me. Uh, but right now, I choose the cases uh, that I take on. You know, the really really serious cases I take on. Other than that, I would rather they learn. So what we wanted to do was to incorporate uh, the giving and creating a social impact through our business right so that was uh that's how the one help one model started to to evolve um here zeal is uh, working with the the homeless community and we also work with community mm -hmm. leaders yeah. to give jobs and and uh, transform lives and i work a lot with the refugee community leaders to see who on the ground really needs our help and also empower the community leaders to start creating opportunities or or working together to make money. Like some people have started bakeries, they start uh, cooking together in, in, in their groups and start marketing it together. And, and that keeps them sustainable. So instead of always depending or expecting people to give them money, they're actually creating income for themselves with their friends, with their community and all that, right? And the other thing I also did was, uh, we, we started to shift was to encourage business owners to uh, incorporate social impact into their business and here we have uh farida our uncle and queen that we brought to batam at one time right and uh she did an amazing um work with a group of uh, uh children 
in a very low income uh, village where you know the, the the village was actually sitting on on drain water i have call it no it was not it was not a very pleasant place to live in it was uh, the smell was not very good um but they they have a community there and, and the children were there right so we went there we brought kids and we brought the Angklong Queen and the Angklong Queen actually taught them Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in what? One, two hours? In less than two hours, right? They could play so many music together and that was so fun to see, you know, how the children actually, actually um, evolved and get empowered and this is just one example. We've got other examples where people actually, once they step into their leadership, they were transforming lives in their own communities. And we have some people here like Noraisha who has run her own communities, built communities, and also empowered so many women at the same time. Yeah, women and men at the same time. Uh, besides that, uh, we've also started to go out of Malaysia uh, and into other countries. Like um, actually recently, I also uh, gone into India uh, for 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 social impact, um, but Cambodia was is and currently is one of our active giving uh, through water pumps, solar power uh, that we are providing in the in the country uh, for the really poor, uh, the low the low income where they really do not have access even access to clean water or energy, and this is what we are doing currently right now, right? So what we have started is uh, a, 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 an involvement. Uh, for many years and it's very gradual what we notice right that it becomes so normal to us we don't even realize it but looking back we saw how our work came from small things to big things yeah and then people started noticing what the work that I do and what Zil does and in 2017 um, I was awarded the best personal brand award uh, as a life transformer by the Marketing Institute of Singapore 2019 we won the award for brands for good award um, as a community business model where we work with uh, the, the low income marginalized communities as well as the refugee communities to create community leaders so that they can create change in their own circles yeah and uh, 2019 also in early 2020, we were uh, brought to Penang to receive the Malaysian Green Project Management Award under sustainability, under the uh, Sustainability Network Malaysia uh, here in, in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah? So that was how we started evolving. And we noticed that through business, through creating income for yourself and helping others, not only you activate the law of giving, you are actually creating a lot of changes in the world. And this is uh, Business Times covering my work um, on helping others to succeed, yeah, along with other um, uh, social conscious business owners at the same time. So now, why is it that we are talking so much on uh, sustainable community development and sustainability? So the the effect I actually started in 2020 where it was a wake-up call like Zil and I we've been talking this as like you know we were talking this as a family say oh wouldn't it be nice to do this do this or oh, this is my dream to do this to help people and all that you know they say and we say this like oh this is for our hereafter our ahirat you know we want we want to do this for our our uh, not just good for our life here on earth but also in a hereafter because we want to go to heaven I mean that's that's the the personal personal reason why we were doing this right and then and then 2020 happened where it was a big wake up call where we realized we are done talking and it is about more taking action, taking inspired action and actually doing it, right? Uh, and this is what we notice. A lot of times I attend conferences, especially on women empowerment topics, right? Every year people talk about women empowerment, not in uh, uh, problems of uh, uh, sexual harassment, not enough women being uh, in management and all that. And it's like over five years, I say, how come the numbers are still like that? How come it's less? It should be equal if that was the intention already. And that's what I noticed. People analyze more. They focus on certifications a lot of times, the paperwork, but not the inspired action. Why not stop it? When you see a problem, stop it and let's do something about it and create good with it. And then you will see some some disruption there right so what happened is 2020 was there a disruption in the whole world economy with covid virus so we were we were kind of like um you know um uh, like you know uh, reminded that this is something that we need to do um fast uh compared to what we were just talking about in 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 the in the past right so um 
let me see now. Okay, so one of the things, the challenges that we saw during that time, um, including ourselves, right? Because when we, when COVID happened and um, Zil and I were supposed to be separated just a few days before the actual lockdown, I was supposed to go to Miami, but I couldn't get a flight ticket for some reason, you know? And I'm like very frustrated. Ah, oh, you all cannot get, why they keep changing and all that. But of course, at that time, people were like really unsure of flights, yeah? I was supposed to be in the US. Uh, Zil was supposed to take my daughter to Singapore for her for her visa. My daughter Singapore and Zil is Malaysian, right? So a few days after that, lockdown happened. So imagine if all of us were, you know, we actually got what we what we wanted at that time. I will be in the US, Singapore passport. Uh, Zil is in Singapore, Malaysian passport. He has to come back. My daughter is Singaporean. She has to stay in Singapore, and it's going to cause a lot of problems and we're not going to be around um, we're, we're going to be separated right but alhamdulillah with god's blessings we happen to be in the same country because none of our plans work and that brought us together to start thinking what can we do during that lockdown because all my events were supposed to be overseas for 2020 all our uh, training all my corporate training for the whole year we're supposed to speak at different different companies and different countries were all cancelled or postponed indefinitely, right? And we've never done anything like online and uh, doing, you know, all this, uh, even like Zoom, I was not very familiar leading it. I attended, but it was very quiet. I didn't turn on my, uh, my, my um, camera at that time. I was one of those people, right? I didn't know how to really hold a, 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 a seminar or any training online on Zoom. But within that few, uh, that few days after the lockdown, I was crying for two days. Yeah, I was like crying, like oh, I was. It was such a close call. Another one is I was crying because I lost all my money, right? Uh, that's what I thought, and I was crying also because uh, I was like, what if I died? What if I got COVID and died? Did I do all those things that I said I wanted to do? You know, did I did I try hard enough? And that was when I, I we had a discussion, Zil and I, and then we. We call our friend in the in Canada who has a software development company, and we moved all our business online. Right, that's how we started. And you know what? We actually earned more in one month than we did in whole year. And God blessings, God's blessings. Um, we didn't know about the online stuff, right? So we we started to go into digital marketing. And during COVID, we saw a lot of disruption um, that was not very positive. For example loss of incomes in people around us who well, had people calling us saying they don't have money, they lost so much money, some lost their jobs, they couldn't pay their bills, they couldn't pay their staff, they were facing challenges and they don't have savings. A lot of people don't have enough cash to sustain them for a couple of months, right? And the other thing is, you always hear this word, during COVID, this word, uh, I learned this word, no? During COVID, before that, I never heard this word, pivot. <laughs> you got to pivot upper to pivot. <laughs> it's like pivot, pivot, like moving to a new, a, a new way of doing things. And a lot of people do not know how to pivot and innovate or create within a short period of time because they're so stuck in doing things in a certain way. And they struggle to market. They don't know how to market themselves, their products, their services. And that's why they're stuck in that, that, that poverty cycle, right? And they don't have a support system. They don't have a community. They don't have friends who actually have uh, are able to support them. Like we did. Like when we didn't know, we called our friend in, the, in Canada, right? Because before this, we were doing a lot of work with networks, uh, quality networks that we, we got to know people from around the world. So we have that support system whenever we think, or who can we call if we needed something? We'll just go into our, our mental uh, Rolodex or our internet, you know, the people that we know, who knows who, who knows who, to be able to connect us. But many people do not have that, right? And the other thing is, ah, this is also another thing is struggle with money beliefs. And I noticed this until today. A lot of people still struggle with money beliefs. I cannot afford last so expensive. Wow, uh, how to how to get? You think I got so much money, uh, you know? Uh, uh, I, uh, first thing is uh, impossible for me. Maybe other people can, yeah. So a lot I have to do with money beliefs that they don't see that they can create something when they don't when they they think they don't have money. When actually money is available, it is how are you going to exchange that energy in order for you to receive the money? So they struggle a lot with money beliefs, and it's deep set it's so deep set that um they don't realize that that they can actually activate 
wealth consciousness and, and the law of attraction with money. Yeah, They cannot get the right partners and suppliers. Zill and I struggled with this for a long time, but we have decided it's not now. We are, we are attracting the right partners and suppliers and even strangers that came into our lives because of the energy that we, we have. Yeah. Yeah, so um, confidence, lack of confidence, the codependent mindset, uh, a lot of sabotage patterns, all of this stuff, yeah, and also not prepared for crisis. A lot of people are not prepared for crisis, and that's why um, they are they they are suffering because of the COVID period, right? So during that time, in initially, what we did, we started to really do massively attracting people come and 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 get online we started doing zoom calls we started to support people how to create your own social impact grow your own communities and i would i would proudly say some of the people that you see here have really transformed their incomes started creating business networks got to work with each other collaborated and they are doing other things already yeah so the covid has taught us a couple of things that we must be aware of and what happens after COVID right now has gone to different areas of awareness that we must be prepared. Yeah, COVID was a big reminder. Actually, we knew about this. It's going to come up someday, but we never thought it was going to come out in 2020. It came out in 2020. And after that, it's like, whoa, right now we got to do something. Okay, Financial crisis happening uh, after COVID. Uh, food security, something I will address a little bit also after this of what happens right now uh, after COVID and with the geopolitical changes that's happening, yeah? Climate crisis, you've seen this 2021 with all the floods happening around the world. Even now, they are going through climate crisis, yeah? So these are things that are happening right now and it's okay. A lot of times people have been telling me, even back in the 80s, people were telling me, oh, this is the world is going to end already, you know? Uh, look at the economy, look at the world and all that. And during the 80s, yes, some people lost a lot of money. They lost their homes. They lost their jobs. Uh, they lost their family wealth. But some people actually thrive. Some people became billionaires, millionaires. And or if they're not even millionaires, but they're very, very comfortable. They're very okay, yeah? So I've been hearing since, because I'm a, I'm a child born in the 70s. Yeah? I was born in 1971. So my, my, my actual learning started in the 80s, of course, right? When I was in primary school where I could understand. And since then, I remember my father was saying, oh, economy is bad right now. We, are, we need to do all these things. So look at us now, you know, it's, it, and it's okay. But the thing is, there were some people who succeeded and there were some people who were not. And that was because of how they were actually using all of those things that in the trends to actually thrive instead of allowing it to... Um, allow their, 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 their lives to just be controlled by the external circumstance. But right now, this is good. This is happening and it's okay. It's just about what are we going to do about this? Yeah. So you hear this and don't be scared. Yeah. You will see a lot of fear going on in the news right now. Oh, you know, like Chuck <laughs> Clement was just saying, I heard Malaysia said there's not enough poultry. Yeah. There's not enough. And this is what came out. Malaysians are told to plant their own food and breed livestock to battle food shortages, right? So plant your own food, grow your own vegetables, uh, um, have your own farms, right? And then I got some people, I, I noticed some people were always were complaining about what, how to grow uh, chickens in the condo, you know? And then some people say, oh, I already have chickens in the condo. So it's, it's uh, you know, if, if people are just cannot fathom how their life is going to change, right? Mm -hmm. And this is also another, another, um, uh, article that came out in New York Post, uh, food shortages. So it's not just specific to Singapore or Malaysia. It is actually around the world, right? Food, food shortages in the next slow-moving disaster is the next slow-moving disaster to hit the world. So it's going to go in stages. Yeah. And also this is in the Economist that came and this is an article that came out in May, just quite recently. Uh, 2022 coming food catastrophe war because of the war um an, an animal you, you, not just human food but food for animals are also deemed to be in shortage right now mm -hmm. climate change flood crisis that's happening uh, last 20, uh, 2021 we saw that not just in malaysia but also happening in places like philippines in places like in the us you see there were floods and i met uh, and i some of the, uh, some of the news that i was not even aware of but because i've got friends around the world that i i network with uh, some even in uh, ireland i had a chat with uh, another friend in ireland and she was saying that 
there was flood as well, Australia as well, you know, and I'm like, oh, really? Huh? You know, and it is there, it is happening. There are uh, changes in the, 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 the geographic uh, plates, you know, thing. we are going through transition, we are going through movement right now, right? So it is how do we not only survive, but thrive during these times, right? So this is what we call creating a sustainable lifestyle. Now, before I go into a sustainable lifestyle, I'm going to share with you a little bit of education on what sustainability is. Um, as the word means, sustainability is to make it long term. Huh? So the term sustainability actually improves the quality of our lives, protects our earth, uh, protects our ecosystem and preserves the natural resources for future generations. Now, in the past, people don't really talk about sustainability because it was about making money now, creating money now. And when that happens, in the long run, it is not only going to destroy your life, it's going to destroy your future generation's lives, yeah? Just like when we talk about relationships, yeah? Because I also do relationship uh, work with, with people, whether in business or in personal lives. It's just like, oh, uh, wow, you enjoy life now, you don't, but you don't care about your, 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 your spouse or you don't care about your family. It's not like doing everything immediately, you know? Oh, we gotta, we gotta make money now, but you don't take time to really build relationship with the people who love you. And then in the end, it, you lose the relationship. And then it's like, oh, you're trying to get back and it's, it's already spoiled. You can't go back to the person you have hurt and, and you have not uh, been co uh, close to, you know? So that is, that is some, something like, you know, uh, uh, an example of a sustainable relationship, right? So in our life, sustainability includes your income, your business, your communities, right? And we don't want to be at those people who firefight when there's no money suddenly, oh, I'm so desperate, try to get this job, that job, and then go door knocking, go and ask for, for money here and there, you know, oh, I'm, I'm so desperate. We, are, we don't want to be one of those people because it's not a fun place to be in, right? Uh, we want to be one of those people who are giving. yeah, giving, who, are be, who can offer help, who have the resources because you have done the work in the past, who are not, you know, scared of, of, of all these disruptions. Because you've gone through it, you've gone through in the past where you've had experienced no money, you've had experienced difficulties, and you still succeed, you know, you didn't give up, you didn't say, oh, cannot do it, I quit my relationship, I quit my job, I quit everything, you know, you are one of those people who are resilient, you've gone through it, and now let's be one of those people to help others as well, right? And sustainable living is actually a lifestyle that attempts to reduce the earth's natural resources by an individual or society, okay? So, the, the sustainable lifestyle is how you live sustainably. A sustainable community, the group of people who have that sustainable lifestyle, sustainable thinking, are the people who actually manages human, natural, financial capital to meet current needs while ensuring adequate, adequate resources are available for future generations so that our children not only will survive, but they will thrive. They will be one of those people who are actually giving, are able to give and help others and choose who they can help also, you know. Um, that is putting you in a, in a level of um, having resources. And we believe strong communities are the foundation of peaceful and healthy planet for humanity love and respect, right? And that's what creating that sustainable community is. And we've been talking about this um, during the COVID time, the last two years, where Zil and I were getting people to get online, start creating your own communities, go and make your $5,000 to $20,000 and all that, right? That was the save yourself first, right? So, and creating the social impact comes with it as well. Now we want people to not only go make your money, but start building strong communities because that is how you start having a, a planet full of love and respect. Yesterday, I was just talking to one lady from Sweden, right? And um, we, we connected and she was like, wow, you know, uh, finally, you know, it's so nice to see somebody across the world who also, um, you know, somebody that she can, she can, uh, be in, in con, uh, connection with whenever there is um, anything that, you know, we, we need to, to support one another with. And this is what our intention is for this community that we are creating. Yeah. So um, the, the sustainable community that we are creating uh, have already kind of like started with uh, a land in Desaru that we saw 
And this is our vision for that land. So um, the people that are behind it include people like Ashraf. Ashraf was somebody who founded that land and, and now he is building it and he's looking to work with more people like us and more other people um, that we are tying up with to start creating the community of a, a, a sustainable and a community that is full of love and respect. Yeah. So we have kind of started it the last couple of years in a in a in a way that is already uh, setting what is to come now that we are sharing with you. And most recently, I think outside of our, just our networks of people, right? Like Zil and I go there quite often. We've had people like Fisby, a friend of ours in, in uh, Malaysia who also joined in and also saw the land. Um, and most recently is we've got the Endurance Street team from Johor to actually ride the horses in that land. Yeah, So I'll just share a little short video of the of the what they did at that land. Oh, is it? Cannot see. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, I think, oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. Zil said cannot see. I, I stopped sharing. Never mind. Yeah. But uh, they, they were actually involved. Can you see this? Yeah. The slide? Okay, never mind. So anyway, they 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 all rode up the, the hills there and then they saw the beautiful space uh, of where uh, the, the land is. And in this era, we have this sustainable land that we are creating and we hope to also grow that community there as well. Um, and also those people who are not living in Desaru or nearby Desaru, uh, they have an opportunity to connect with us to start growing and building their own communities. But the thing is, it is important to start now. Very, very important. Okay, So that sustainable community is actually a community where we support one another with, we grow resources with, we reach out and exchange uh, with one another what is needed and what is not need, uh, what is needed and what what we can offer and what we can we can exchange from other other um, you know people in the community that can provide them so it is actually a sustainable uh, community and a sustainable lifestyle at the same time right so our vision of having a sustainable lifestyle community is this to get the slide is not on. huh the slide is not on. You have to share. Where did I stop? Yeah. Oh, okay. The picture of the land, the picture of the, of the land. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You didn't see that? No. Okay. So I'm just going to share with you what exactly. Okay. The sustainable community that we are looking at is actually to have a community where we can um, exchange, um, you know, resources with one another, support one another, not only in terms of uh, for business networks, connections, but also in terms of help or anything like resources, we are in connection with each other. Yeah, this is where we are going to go. And also the vision of our lifestyle uh, community, a sustainable lifestyle community. Um, right now, we are building that in Desaru. So whoever is around here or want to move here or want to just experience it, um, you are welcome to, all right, to, to, to be there. This is a 25 acre land that we have. And this was actually um, discovered by Ashraf Baka. I'll introduce him uh, in a bit, uh, about him in a bit. Um, in his currently right now, there are horse stables here. There are um, goats and also a pineapple plantation, right? And some vegetation. Uh, and there's a lot more that can be done with this area as well, okay? So the intention of our community is basically to get business owners, investors, individuals to share resources, share knowledge, share opportunities to start creating your sustainable lifestyle and live your life in a very joyous way, okay? So we don't want to be one of those people who are kind of like fear-mongering, putting so much fear on a lot of people. We know it's coming, but we don't, we, we, and we accept it. And we are very grateful that it's happening because it's going to create another life for us that is going to be happy. But if you are focused on all the negative things, start complaining about why these leaders never do this and this, look, they also have no idea what's going to come. You know, some of them are, 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 are firefighting, 
thing, you know, they are doing what is urgent and important and not doing what is important, right? So it is about you as the intelligent business owner, investor, individual to be able to start preparing and creating that life now joyous way in whatever joy means to you giving in whatever giving means to you gratitude you know love and respect and all that right so this is how our life is as humans and the way we do things is going to evolve in the next few years yeah starting now it's already changing but we don't want you to be one of those people who are in that desperate mode firefighting um uh, asking people for for money and help uh, only you know and not being able to add value in your own way okay so what this is what we can do to support you to create your sustainable lifestyle. Um, you know, in the past, I've worked with organization businesses on how they can incorporate love and respect in inside their lives and we've done that in a way to also create social impact uh, in our in our communities uh, in in communities around us that we want to help right so we can also share with you on a couple of areas to help you get started as well the first thing i see is very very important is your mindset mindset especially around money your wealth consciousness that, that, that how can you start creating? How can you start receiving? And a lot of people say, I've got no problem with receiving money. I've got no problem with having faith in God, you know, that, that God will provide. I have no problem with that. But at the same time, they, they are still not, they are still like having that mindset of lack, which is things like, oh, I, can, uh, I would really want to, I wish I could, but uh, I don't have the money, I don't have the funds. And they stop there, you know? When you start to really, receive well consciousness having that healthy money mindset you will start thinking how can i make it possible and this is how we can reverse back a lot of deep years of conditioning and fear mongering that we can we can remove and start instilling what it actually means to be human you know and we humans are not meant to, to just be firefighting and, and living in struggle. When there are 7 billion of us here in the world, we can actually thrive. So that starts with that having that mindset of wealth consciousness. The other one that we would like to educate you on is on circular economy. And it's something I'm also learning myself. I have, I've learned the last couple of years on how wonderful a circular economy is. Using all the earth resources, using all that we already have and helping each other grow. You know, and you, you don't have to like, you know, uh, uh, use uh, uh, or invest in such big, you know, um, uh, machinery and all that. It is something that we can, we can actually uh, create in our own communities as well, yeah? The other one is green leadership. Green leadership, I've talked about feminine leadership. I talk about leadership using feminine energy. Green leadership is similar and also incorporating both the feminine and the masculine way of doing leadership, right? And green leadership is not just about me, and it's not just about we, it is all about humanity, it is all about the earth, it is all about bigger than that. It is all about service to, to others as well, yeah? So this kind of leadership is something that a lot of people say, wow, we need our leaders to be like that, that, that. but they themselves are not leading themselves in a green way we start with ourselves right we show it by example and that's how people will start to understand that hey this is what leadership is about actually okay and number four is creating sustainable wealth what is required for you to be able to support yourself in the long uh, periods of time right keeping your wealth sustainable and this is something we will also be sharing uh, in the community that we we are supporting Okay, so looking again at our vision of creating that sustainable lifestyle, uh, one of the one of the things that we do is uh, using the land uh, with uh, vegetation, using the land with animals. Right now, we have goats and horses, and and we intend to um, grow more. For example, chickens and and camels. We're bringing in like pigeons, yeah, and ostriches, yeah. So that we want to uh, develop the land because animals actually can help the land stay stay healthy, yeah. And humans are very much needed there as well. Right now, in that in that land in Desaru, there are about three humans <laughs> and a lot more animals and plants and vegetables, right? So we'd love to bring more humans there as well, and in whatever areas that you you feel that you can contribute as well, yeah. And we also aim to turn that 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 
that land into a horse sanctuary. Because right now what we see is um, a lot of the industries uh, uh, that people, people use for entertainment or sports can somehow be quite abusive. So what we what we found out about a lot of horses that are, are not able to um, perform anymore in races, um, they are put to sleep. So we find that, you know, even though maybe they're not able to run very well or they have a hurt leg or something, they can still teach us a lot of things. And I've learned so much from horses. I'm so grateful to horses and I love them so much because I learned so much about myself. I learned about my own internal strength. I learned about my resilience. I learned about about managing my aura and my energy. I learned about balance. Yeah. I learned about uh, so many things, even, even, even a leadership. Yeah. yeah. Overcoming fear and all that. And so much that horses can teach us. And if you heard uh, Ashraf's talk the other time when he was one of our guests, he talked about the manual. You know, even horses' manual can, can be so, can do so much good yeah. for vegetation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a, a lot of things, yeah. If you want the recording of that that interview, you are welcome to ask me. Okay, so uh, we want to create a horse sanctuary where we save horses in that area, and there are about two hundred horses right now in Singapore that can be saved, uh, and we are looking to um, yeah bring them in as well. Yeah. So the other way, the other thing that we are planning to do also with that land and horses is to start educating people on horse riding, on horse therapies, because horses are also used to uh, help, especially with people with mental health issues, uh, children with autism. Um, and I've seen uh, how uh, autistic children have yeah. ridden horses before and how they are around Impressive. horses. And it's amazing how they are, you know, uh, with balance, with their confidence, um, and also in communication skills as well. So it's amazing what it does and also this is this is one of the things that we we want to educate people more as well yeah um and the people behind this land for now um are the people that uh, we are working with to keep this uh, land sustainable and now we are zil and i are looking to grow the community of this land and we that's why we are here talking to you to see how you want to be part of the part of the community as well yeah so we have ashraf Bakka. he is the founder of alia risk farm he is also the founder of agropreneur farms in in malaysia uh, he's also a, a founder of alia risk in in brunei in indonesia he's got farms in also in indonesia as well um he does sheep breeding he does horse riding uh um activities as well and educating people on livestock yeah and we also have Nazir Hamza, who is founder of Chanko Zen, and he's also uh, part of Urban Hijau here in Malaysia as well, uh, on uh, growing vegetables, on farming, and going um, and using the environment sustainably. He is an expert in that, and he is not just in knowledge-wise, he actually does it. And the people in the, the people that I'm working with are not just people who teach and not do, they are people who are actually on the ground. They don't talk about, oh, you should do this and all that, but they are really people on the ground doing the actual work. And this is the people I'm working with. And just like Zil and I, of course, we talk about love and respect. We talk about giving, helping the poor and all that. But we are also people on the ground who actually create the transformation on the ground. And this is what we would like to encourage every one of us who are in, in our community to be those people who actually do the work and not just talk about it, right? So Zil and I, we are, we, we are also... Um, you know, uh, part of this uh, uh, team that is building this sustainable uh, land. And Zil and I are focused on community development because that's our strength, right? And that's why, you know, when we were uh, awarded, it was on community business model. Yeah, so um, the other people that are in our team as well include um, Ananda, Ananda uh, Ivananto. Um, he is a uh, part of an investment network where you know he's working right now with Japanese funds on creating sustainability. Um, right now, he, he does a lot of sustainable work in Indonesia. Um, Ashraf also does a lot of sustainability in Asia, uh, in Indonesia as well. Um, and uh, Ananda is uh, the person who is uh, leading the Asia Africa Research Consulting Investment Group and also the AWIN group, yeah? the Awina group as well. And Dr. Isan is an expert on circular and, uh, economy and renewable energy. And he is someone who is uh, not only a, a, a doer, consultant, he's also an entrepreneur, and he's also a startup mentor uh, on creating circular economy. And he has done um, actually circular, circular economy models in many 
uh, communities, including in Europe, where um, he, he, he does that uh, circular economy model, the eco-village model in Europe as well. Now he is back in Indonesia and he's doing work in Indonesia as well. Yeah. So he's also in our team as well. Right. So these are the characteristics of having a sustainable community. One thing, lives are safe. So you tend you save lives when you are in community. You're not alone. You won't be like struggling. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You are alone. You actually be a part of your community. Um, there will also reduce damage to property, reduce economic losses when you are in community. Um, also minimize social disruption. And right now, in the next few years, there will be a lot of transformation, a lot of disruptions that is happening. Um, but if you're alone, you'll be not be able to handle that. You know, as well, uh, much. Uh, as compared to being in a community. And also being in a community, you help to uh, make local governments uh, ability to resume operations quickly. Uh, you also, there will be also shorter recovery period when you are in community. And also um, uh, when it comes to the, uh, de dealing with disaster, there will be uh, a better uh, synergy when it comes to individuals and businesses as well, yeah? Okay. So, um, just a little bit, some of the background of the work that we've, did, we've done in the past with refugees, uh, we've worked with uh, refugees where we transform them from, you know, uh, uh, being in trauma to leading, you know, really re coming out of, uh, uh, of that, that mindset of being a victim, right? So this is Hassan, we are so proud of Hassan, who was a teenage, teen refugee, now he's no longer a teen yeah. refugee, he's already an adult, right? 22 years old. So when we worked with him, he was 15 years old. And now he's 22, but we've seen his transformation. He did, he did a lot of work on himself. And I know it wasn't easy for him as well, but we've seen him transform, became a media personality, TEDx speaker, oh, helping to. others. Yeah, <coughs> Yusra from Yemen. Now she's in Canada already. And she just sent me a message and I'm, we're still in touch with friends, right? So she attended our personal brand workshop in 2019. And after that, you know, she started really working on herself, being in the media, talking about the refugee cause, starting her own little uh, business when she was in Malaysia, and um, also uh, sharing a lot about the refugee plight. And we did raise a lot of funds together at that time when we both appeared on television, uh, interviewed by the Singapore media. Yeah. So um, this is this is the work that we do. We transform people from small things to big things. Yeah but only if they want to, right? And, and I've seen some successes in the past, so I want to share some of the successes that I saw within the business community where people scaled up from, from zero to go into 25K, 18K monthly, uh, just changing the money mindset. Huda, I love uh, Huda, is also one of our, our people in our community, and she is also one of the mentors also in our community doing digital marketing. She's also creating a, a bigger impact. Uh, people starting to charge euros instead of just ringgits that's what we want don't think of oh my my uh, my my exchange rate is so low we earn so little then you go and charge us dollars why not right yeah. so go do that right so these are some of the things that we started we started to work on in our community and um i would like to um uh invite all of you to come in and start taking action how investor learn about it. What is a killer economy? How do I learn? How do I grow my community? Be in community, not do everything alone. And, and after that, you know, when that, there's a problem, cry, cry alone, be depressed alone. No, get to know, get involved, volunteer here, be a resident. If you want to come to Desaru, take a look at the place and think of how can you get involved? How can you grow yourself and your community? And the best way is to start learning, start applying, start being involved. And that is where that's your responsibility. Yeah. So now I'm going to pass it over to Zil on sharing on how you can you can start doing this. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, Salam. Welcome, welcome. Okay. okay. Hello. Assalamualaikum and hi. Everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. So yeah. So I, I want to give a big hand to Mushida for the amazing sharing presentation. Right. So today, what I'm going to do is because Mushida actually took, talked a lot about some of the things that I'm going to be covering as well. So I'm going to cut it short. I'm going to be covering only on certain aspects, like what can you do from now to take action? Like, like Mushira was talking about a uh, food crisis, financial crisis, right? So what we do is we, we are now sharing people to create awareness. It's not to scare them, uh, all these things, but it's just to make preparations. Just like example, give you an example, right? People in SARS, when SARS happened, 
right? Those people who actually learn from the experience and they took action, they took their business online or at least hybrid 50-50 offline and online. And when, when COVID happened, their business did not go totally bust. You know, they still get to survive and somebody even thrive during that time, make millions of dollars because they were ready, they, we were prepared. So that's the, the beauty of um, uh, being prepared and taking in a uh, proactive action versus until something happens, then we start uh, being uh, in a desperate mode, in a crisis mode. Might as well plan from now. So for us, our goal to create awareness on the future uh, financial crisis or food crisis is to make all of us aware so we can start preparing from now. Like, what can we do? to be able to prepare if a food crisis comes, at least we don't like, we will not maybe not recover 100%, but at least we will cushion the fall and we will be in a community where we actually can support each other. We're not alone. As we will be quite happy, we'll be quite secure because we're in a part of a people, the like-minded people who is not going to kill each other for food or not going to hurt or injure each other for food. So let me just share with you my slide um, I, I, I created, right? So, okay, so my, so my sharing today will be sharing about uh, how to prepare for financial and food crisis. Just a few things that I want to share with you guys, right? So just I start. Okay. The first is, uh, which I also mentioned earlier on, is learn how to grow your own food, right? Whether you are living in a apartment or condominium or in a house or a, a landed property, right? We must learn to actually grow our own food, like basic things that we can, we can use uh, that, that to grow our food and we can eat. If there's no food, at least we have we uh, have that knowledge on uh, the food that we can eat and we will not die of starvation because we have our own food. Okay, so what I'm going to... Uh, okay, so Mushira mentioned that right, it's not about Nazir, right? So Nazir is also part of our team and we are very proud to have him because he is a person who actually does work on the ground as Mushira mentioned. Right? And just to share a bit about his uh, amazing background, uh, I'll share about the second part, which is He's a permaculture design certified uh, since 2014, you know, and then he's very passionate for looking for better ways to improve growing and cultivating healthy lifestyle while promoting food sustainably. He has a five year old social enterprise set up with the Kolompo uh, Community Organic Farm under the name of Urban Hijang. We have been there a few times and we bought even our vegetables there as well. It's very good quality. And in the future, we might even um, tie up with them for whoever joins our community to do whoever is in KL can go and learn on how to grow your own food. They have a course on, on that as well. So we've been running it probably um, from July onwards. So who is in KL can come or even if you are from Singapore, you can come to KL to join this course on how to grow your own food. It's very simple. You can even grow the food in your own condo, you know, like if you have the knowledge. Right? And then uh, Nade established Chanko Zen. He's the founder of Chanko Zen in Singapore in 2017. And they have a few organic gardens in schools, community gardens in uh, in uh, in Singapore. And uh, yeah, he's also a master NLP practitioner and a certified adult trainer, uh, uh, ACTA certification. So like Nazi is an amazing person who is actually doing amazing things in schools, in uh, like now, like Singapore government, they're already preparing like what if happens a food crisis, what can we do? So they already started doing courses uh, for schools, for communities. So that's why we should start somewhere. If you know that in your community that they're doing this kind of course, start attending this kind of courses for you to learn. At least, you know, like you have the knowledge. If anything happens, you can you can actually apply it, right? So, okay. So now the second is to buy a land uh, or grow your own food and have livestock. So that's why we were talking about, um, like me and Mushida, like we were talking about when did we actually have this idea of doing, uh, having a land and growing our own food? Like, like some people say, oh, uh, uh, you're so lucky you have a uh, land and all that, but they don't know like the amount of work, the effort that we put in, right? We actually visited, uh, we went around Malaysia looking for land, you know, we were from Pahang to North to Johor to look for land. And then we were so blessed that we were able to meet Ashraf uh, and Nazir who shared about their, 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 their Sardu land. And now we have partnered with them to actually provide this. Um, sustainable business model. Maybe some people, they might want to come and stay on the land as a resident, and then they will have access to the food, the, the livestock, horses, uh, or if some people, they say, oh, maybe your land is too far from where I live. Maybe I live outside of the country. We will, we're going to run courses where you can use this sustainable business model in your own country. For example, if you live in Canada or you live in Australia, or in other countries, you can actually get your own land there and start developing your own land. Uh, every, anywhere you are. So we're going to run this course for the next uh, one year just to test it out as a, as a business model. If it works, we will, uh, we will 
export this business model to all over the world. And we also like our passion also to go around the world looking for land. So I mean, not for ourselves alone, but because our goal is not to save ourselves alone, but we want to save as many people as, po as possible from being in poverty, from being, uh, from being affected by this crisis, food crisis, financial crisis, which eventually is going to come. So why not for us not just thinking about ourselves, we think about how can we help others as well. So people in different countries can also benefit from our uh, knowledge as well, right? And then, okay, this is a bit about the, the, the Saru land. Uh, we will, in the future, we will talk more about the Saru land and more of the details. But now just uh, introduction um, is owned by our partner, Ashraf Agropreneur. Uh, currently own and operate the 25-acre livestock farm. Uh, it's in Bandar Penawar, uh, Slidi, Kecil, Kota Tinggi, Johor, Malaysia. It's about, from, from KL, it's about four hours plus. And then from Singapore, it's now easy, easy. You can actually take a ferry, direct ferry from, from Singapore directly to Desaru. So there's a old ferry terminal and now there's coming out a new one. Once the new one comes out, it's going to be right at Desaru uh, Beach itself, Desaru Coast itself. So it's easy. It's like five minutes uh, from Desaru Beach. You want to go to the hotel, there's a lot of hotels in five minutes uh, reach. And then if you want to go to the land, uh, we can arrange a transport that goes to the land. But it's about 20 to 30 minutes. Or if you drive, uh, uh, MPV or SUV, you can even drive up the land itself. That's what we do. We we, we get a, a SUV or MPV, then we actually drive up the land. Now they actually cleared a lot of the land, uh, the, the, the 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 soil in the land. So when you go up, it's not so rocky and it's not so um, daunting to go up. It's quite now. It's quite fun to go up already. But if you go together, you can. We always can convoy. You know. So yeah. So they are now into really into livestock. Uh, Ashraf's expertise is livestock. He has done. Uh, for cows, uh, goats all over Asia, right? And then we are going to, into agro tourism. Uh, Desaru was named one of the most popular tourism uh, destinations in the world, you know. And then uh, a lot of potential with the Desaru land. That uh, what we do is we get people to come and see the land themselves. Our next visit uh, is going to be on the third, uh, where we actually bring people there to see the land. Then you can see. Oh, if I want to go to that, I want to third uh, uh, July, yeah. What can I do to uh, to contribute uh, or volunteer? Or if you say I want to stay on the land, uh, I want to be a resident, I want to build my house here, okay, what do I do? So then we also will share with you what is the process like, right? Even if you're from outside, from another country, you also can uh, be a resident on the land. So that's a process that goes with it, right? Okay, and then have a community of like-minded people on the land, right? We want to be able to have people full of love and respect with values with principles so when we're on the land we actually safeguarding each other for example let me give you an example right if uh, we have a food crisis shortage of foods all around the world but our uh, uh, land people are working together to grow their own food we have food supply we have livestock we can even have like butter system where uh, some people have uh, they're good in making clothes some people are good in education so we actually can trade services i mean we have like-minded people in the community in different uh, field of area. So that's what we want to do. We want to get as many people as possible to be on the land. Uh, but there are certain criteria that we have as well because we don't want people to see it as a retirement place. not a retirement place where you go there and just retire and not do anything. We want people who stay on the land to contribute to the land, whether they want to contribute to the uh, volunteer their time with the horses uh, or become a farmer and plant uh, food or whatever they can volunteer. We want it to be a con um, like a a cooperative effort where everybody puts in something to put to to help the land grow. So whatever you are easy with, you come and see the land, and wherever you you think that you feel can contribute, you can contribute as well, right? So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I want to share with you a video. This video is uh one of the case study that really inspired me to uh to to create this uh, inspired us to create this community. Our community is a place in the U.S. Um, it's called Dancing uh, Rabbit uh, Village. It's an eco village that in the U.S. they actually are quite more advanced than us. You know, they actually started um, this kind of eco village concept all over U.S. and they have an alliance where all these eco village they're in touch with each other. They share they share knowledge, they share resources, whatever in the problems they have, they will help each other. And then uh, this this uh, Dancing Rabbit Village, right? They said during the COVID lockdown, right? they were already self-sustaining. That means that they didn't have to go out to the supermarket to buy things. They were in their community for the one or two years and they were self-sustaining. They had their own food. Nobody was hungry, nobody starved, and they could even give the extra food to other communities that was around them. So that's what we want to do. We want to be able to not only uh, our community survive and thrive, 
but we want to be able to even people who in the around you that need food we can actually export food out to people because we have extra you know that's what we want but the planning has to begin from now but we don't know when the food crisis is coming how it's going to exponentially or ex, uh, accelerate we don't know so it's good to start from now uh, we already started like pineapples and all this kind of thing so we are already in the process so i want to share with you this video is very inspiring uh, let's share the video and then after that we can do a bit of um, uh, a debriefing and sharing about what you thought about the video right let's start now Dancing Rabbit is a living experiment for people to uncover how to live more sustainably. And we're doing so cooperatively because cooperation is the secret ingredient to sustainability. our own microgrid, our own power system. We're creating networks of gardens and people who build and grow our own food for us. We've created a whole network of people who are building buildings in a more sustainable way. We have people who are reclaiming natural resources and trying to create new things with them so that we don't need to make choices of buying participating in systems that add to the exploitation and oppression in the wider culture. So at Dancing Rabbit, um, we don't just want to like live this way, we want to know that we're having an impact. So we've done an audit of our impact on the planet, and uh, we found that we consume about uh, a tenth of the resources of the average American, and that's like as far as reduction of use of fossil fuel, of water, of uh, transportation vehicles, um, solid waste, uh, like we're producing much less trash than the average American. Um, all these different ways that we're really making a huge difference. And so if other people can uh, sort of use some of these systems that we've implemented, they can do the same thing. I remember when I came to Dancing Rabbit for my visitor program, I was potty training my son Lennox. So he actually learned to use the bathroom here at Dancing Rabbit with the humanure system. And when we went back to home then, he was mortified. Like, why would I go to the bathroom in the water? Fishes live in there. And it was really neat to see that, yeah, my three-year-old totally understood this concept that is sometimes too radical for my parents to even wrap their heads around. So Dancing Rabbit is really well known for the things that it does in terms of outer sustainability, but that's not the only type of sustainability. In fact, we need two other kinds of sustainability in order to really create communities that are sustainable. And that's the interpersonal type of sustainability, and that piece comes through with communication and conflict resolution, how we work with other beings, and then there's inner sustainability. And that's the skills that we need to not burn out. What do we need to do to replenish ourselves and make sure that we have the resources to bring to the task at hand? One of the unintended benefits of moving here with my family has been the opportunity to raise my boys in a community that embraces diversity. And they have been able to learn from many different people, many different perspectives. And the nonviolent communication has really become, has worked its way into the fabric of our family communication and has benefited them in ways that I certainly didn't anticipate. For me, a key element of sustainability uh, has to do with social justice, uh, or I should say social injustice. Um, I have had the opportunity here at Dancing Rabbit to confront uh, my own unearned privilege. Uh, as a white male, uh, I, I'm kind of embarrassed to acknowledge that there were a lot of ways in which I, I've simply been blind to the, the, the benefits that 
I've had as a white male in our culture. Sustainability is also about the way people are able to relate to each other. And in the wider culture, unfortunately, there's a lot of oppression and marginalization that happens. But here at Dancing Rabbit, we really are a safe space for people who have experienced that, where they can come and dive into sustainability and the things that we have in common while being honored for their individuality. I have a lot of friends who come here and experience the joy of not being judged. Like others at Dancing Rabbit, I share my kitchen. Um, not everybody eats in their own uh, individual space. And that sharing um, is, I think, pretty essential to the, the social fabric that we have here. Uh, it's not only do I get to develop much deeper and closer relationships with a lot of people who are not part of my nuclear family, uh, my kids get to interact with other adults who have different life experiences than I do. Um, and I get to cook once in a while instead of having to cook every single day. And that frees up so much time to just hang out playing with the kids or go run around and throw a Frisbee or um, I don't know, just there, there are so many other activities that I can now participate in with other people that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So at, at Dancing Rabbit, economically, we're kind of on our own. We've set up systems to cooperate with each other and share resources, and I think that's a big part of our economy. But as far as how we make money, uh, it's up to the indiv individual to figure that out. We don't have a cottage industry here like some intentional communities have. And so uh, each of us has to figure out our way, uh, a way to, to make money. And that can be a struggle, definitely. But we do have a number of ways that people can come in and plug in. We've got the Milkweed Mercantile, which is a worker-owned cooperative here. We also have the nonprofit, the Center for Sustainable and Cooperative Culture. And the nonprofit provides education, workshops for folks, tours, and different things. And it also runs the outreach programs for Dancing Rabbit. So at Dancing Rabbit, we're invited to each share our piece of the truth. And when we really claim our own agency and stop giving our power away to outside authorities, then we can start to co-create a governance that doesn't feel like the sort of policing or power over model where I just have to follow rules, we start to realize, oh, I've shared my information and the group is taking that information, using it to make a decision, and we're all agreeing to live by it because we know that that's the best thing for the whole. I love that at Dancing Rabbit, even though we're seemingly isolated in Northeast Missouri, the middle of the country, we're actually really connected to other communities in a lot of ways. There's communities locally, we call ourselves the tri-communities, and we share meals weekly, have events collaboratively. Um, we also work with other communities in the country beyond Northeast Missouri. The Fellowship for Intentional Communities is also reminding us that we, as eco-villages and communities, are part of a larger movement. We're part of a whole movement of people that understand that we're moving right now from a time of intense separation back into cooperation, back into collaboration. Dancing Rabbit is not the only community that's doing it. And the Fellowship for Intentional Communities reminds us who our team is, who's on our team, as we're coming back together and starting to play the game of cooperation and sustainable living in different ways all over the planet. Okay, thank you for uh, patiently waiting and seeing the video. So okay, I want to ask um, uh, some of you, right, uh, you that watch the video, I just want to get some, some sharing. What do you think of that? Because we have actually had the same essence of the idea of what we're going to do with our land in Saru with the same essence. But any of you want to share ideas, like what you thought of the video, any kind of realizations or some ideas that you have, maybe you want to be able to contribute as well. So just feel free to anybody to unmute, uh, share or share in the chat as well. I just gave a few uh, seconds. Somebody said, Nashwan said, great. Thank you, Nashwan, for sharing. And then Maron said, 
So I think it's about understanding the potential of everyone and allowing to contribute. Yes, I agree with that. That's what the what the that land that dancing eco rabbit is for, and that's what our land is about. Yeah. So we all, when we are in a part of the community, we have the like mind. Then we all protect each other. We all help each other instead of like in the current place that we are. Every day is isolated. Every day is alone. Like we live in condo, we don't even know our neighbors. That kind of thing, you know. So in a community where we all close together, there's no. Uh, there's no there's no uh, like a board there's no boundaries and there's no there's no like gated now that we actually supporting each other yeah so any other sharing that you want to share anybody wants to unmute to share about uh, your ideas mushida maybe you want to share anything yeah, yeah I, think I think this, this is um powerful um, video and uh, this one of the things that we were already envisioning quite some time ago uh, where you know there is a, a contribution of resources uh, and um, it's just to, to, to see that, and it cannot happen when people are just like expecting to take they take only and then they say oh me i'm poor i cannot do this or i i'm you know uh, when they're only expecting to take so here is like everybody coming in and okay adding value to what it is that they they, they want to add value into the community yeah okay okay thank you for sharing mushida and then kai said is is good or hands on learning for the future generations yes the people that will really benefit from this is also Children as well, but children, they if you see children on, on, on natural land resources, they learn very fast, you know, and that's what we want. The children to be not just be academically smart, but they want them to be smart on the ground, in the natural resources, on the land. They can grow their own food, they can ride horses, you know, and they are it, when you are in the natural agreement, you're actually being your, your authentic self. You don't have to pretend to be somebody else, to have a social standing, to be have a nice car, to have a nice house. You don't have to be. You, even you on the land, we actually all together are supporting each other. If you want to build a nice house, it's okay, but nobody's going to judge you if you have a nice, if you have your own simple wooden house that you created yourself, but you are actually a being part of the community. So that's what it's all about. You know? It's all about being helping each other out uh, in the community. And I think now, uh, after years of prayers and efforts, I think this is coming to fruition. But we just want to find the right people to be on 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 part of our community and the land as well. So then we can at least start uh, doing a lot of uh, other amazing things like in the US they've started doing, right? Okay, switching to handphone now. Uh, okay, why does it? Okay, so now I'm going to just continue a bit more on the slides where did I stop. Okay, so now what I'm going to talk about as well is I'm going to talk about. How, learn how to preserve and enhance your wealth. Uh, example, gold, silver, and butter trading. So one of the things that we have learned over the last uh, two years, three years about, uh, can you see the screen now? Oh, not yet. Uh, I think, can I have to change the next screen? Okay. Ah, okay. So what we have learned in the last um, two, three years from, we have learned from futurists, from consultants, from experts, right? COVID is actually just the first stop of certain things that's going to happen, crisis, that's going to happen in the future and this is not to scare you is to preempt you so that you can have the awareness okay if something happened what am i going to do about it so the first was COVID, and then the next would be either food or financial crisis so we have talked about food crisis how to prepare for it but now we're talking about financial crisis if like example right if like you see all the common things about financial crisis in the past is always related to the value of money, the, 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 the dollar money, right? The paper money, like for example, if the US currency collapse or the, 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 the value goes down because of recession, because of war, the, 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 is, if anything happens in like a war, the, the value of money will go down. So when the value of money go down, all the prices of food and that will go up and it will make a lot of people suffer. So what, how can we do to actually preserve our wealth is to what I've learned from experts is to invest in gold and silver and also uh, uh, start to have a habit of barter trading. That everybody have their own specialty supply, whatever we can actually barter trade. And you can only do that when you're in a community. You cannot do that in times of desperation. When people are desperate, you can't do that. People will be hoarding the food themselves. But when you already prepared up front in a community, you can start uh, doing barter trading. So um, one of the things I want to share about, about uh, gold, right? Why is it beneficial to invest in gold? I talk about gold first. Maybe later on we'll talk more about silver and other forms of currency. Is why it makes sense to invest in gold. In gold is because gold is inert to inflation. That means any kind of inflation, it actually it will help us to avoid uh, to 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 be able to not be affected by inflation. The cost of gold is always rising, especially like recently during the Ukraine war, right? The 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 the, the price of gold is still rising right 
gold is the best asset for is for reserve is easy to sell in any country in the world gold is accepted means of payment in over 200 countries in most countries gold is not subject to income tax gold gold, gold supplies are limited production costs are increasing this is good because at least you know that it's not subject to manipulation like currency paper money is it can be subject to manipulation right? people can just print paper money and fake the, the amount of gold that they have behind it but gold because it's in a tangible form people cannot just fake the 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 the, the, the figures and all that right? and then the last is gold is safe reserve for businesses and family so when you have gold you can always trade it for other things supply of goods and other things that people have that you will not be able to do when say financial collapse and the money doesn't have a value anymore you will not be able to use money it's like you know japanese right japanese conquered malaysia and then when they were overthrown all the money that they have the japanese money that right, is totally val uh, not valuable anymore. you cannot use the money anymore and it also can happen with other currencies like us dollar and all that so it's like the gold is the only uh, 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 one of the only metals at the currency that you can actually use it to trade even uh, to crisis to financial problems and all this yeah so, so next okay uh, other benefits in betting gold gold is actually a money it's considered as a currency that you can use to trade right uh buy things gold is protected against crisis as i mentioned earlier gold uh lower risk greater safety and bigger upside than any other investment Gold has no counter uh, counterparty risk. Physical gold cannot bankrupt or uh, broke, right? And then low carrying costs. Gold sorry, it's low maintenance, low cost, and it costs little space. Right? Like if you buy those kind of one one gram gold, like you don't have it doesn't require a lot of space. So sorry, right now what we are doing now is whoever joins our community, right? We're gonna have regular talks on sustainable wealth, on how to uh, uh, sustain your wealth. So then, uh, when when the time comes and you need the, the when even though the money uh, currency doesn't have any value or low in value you can still use the gold to trade to buy things and all that the gold can still be used uh, around so then you will not be uh, affected as much by the inflation or by any kind of crisis so it's good to start from now because during the time when everything goes bust for example there's current uh, financial crisis and war when you want to start getting gold it's going to be very expensive so now is the time when the gold is the price is still okay is to 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 invest it keep it for long term instead of keeping in a fixed deposit bank when the when something happens with the the currency all the money is going to be not going to be any worth so it's better to have to to have some money you can have maybe even half 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 in a currency in in paper money but uh, now our practice now is 15 percent uh, uh no no 15 uh, percent of our money we want to put in gold and then we are teaching people as well to how to do this so there's actually a very systematic structure where we have actually uh, uh, partner with some companies uh, and we are going to educate people on how actually to do this in a very easy way and uh, not and you don't have to invest a tons a thousand of money in investing gold you can do it slowly just by uh, converting some of your expenses uh, into uh, 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 saving for gold as well so if any of you like interested to know more about this we can also share uh, in the future as well we will have more talk on this right okay some of you may be asking right uh, it's a lot of information some of us maybe when i heard about this i was quite overwhelmed so how can you actually get started right there are a few very important factors that you need to start just base use this foundation first and in the future you want to use this you want to uh, continue in more advanced like go into circular economy go into more advanced uh, terms you can also go in right the first important is what me and Shida did is we didn't have any resources when we started. We don't have contacts. We don't have any. And Mushida, uh, she came to KL with, a, a, came with only two ringgit, but she was able to give me that two ringgit to 20,000 in just uh, two weeks. So it actually can be like it's just well functional, it's just mindset and also intention. When we set a very good intention uh, for the future, and especially it's something that is uh, uh, is uh, blessed and is uh, and and is is good in God's uh, grace, right? You'll be able to get a lot of things in the future abundance. And like for us, right? We never imagined, right? We were looking for land. We were only looking. We'll be happy with one acre land or five acre land, but we never know that we're gonna get twenty five acre land that you can work with, you know. So that is all in uh, in 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 God's grace and the right intention, right? And then the second is start to learn about sustainable and related topics, right? So start educating yourself. Uh, 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 there's a lot of resources like you can go on YouTube, you can go on social media, you can go to seminars, and we even our community from now uh, to to the next one year we're gonna run 
uh, monthly uh, workshops on different topics of sustainability, you also can join us as well. Right? And then the third is build your internal strength and resilience. This is very important. As you can see that people who have internal strength and resilience and any kind of crisis, whether it's COVID, they are able to try, not just survive, but they're able to try and help others. But those who do not have this internal strength, they commit suicide. Like people who we, we heard in like Malaysia, right? People used to be pilot, had a very good life, nice car, nice house, but they don't have internal strength. When uh, COVID happened, they lost their job and they, and they committed suicide. They don't see any way out. So like me and Mushida, what we learned, right? It's amazing. What we've learned in the last few months, right? One of the, the amazing, the most um, uh, powerful way to build your internal strength is to horseback riding and archery. It's actually it's amazing. You see, as if you, most people see it as a physical sport, but when you start horseback riding, right, you will see a, a whole total whole being change, your body, mind, and heart and spirit. That you will see changing in your life, your the way you think, the way your your confidence and all these uh, ideas, this vision that we have, right? It, a lot came after we started doing horseback riding. We met the right people in the, the even people in the equestrian, the horse community, they are very supportive you know, of us. They're very, uh, um, uh, they're very uh, cooperative uh, versus people who are in just in money, in capital, right? Capitalism, they are very competitive. They're very uh, like dog in dog world, but in the horse uh, equestrian community, they are very supportive of each other. Right? And then the last is join a like-minded community, uh, like-minded and folk, Solution focused community. So I, I, I say solution focused community because we have been uh, in a lot of communities, right? We have joined this community, that community. A lot of people, they say they want to do a lot of things, but they are more on talking about fear, talking about uh, the doom and gloom, like, like you know, talking about end of times, uh, but they don't provide solutions. Like they say, oh, this is all in like, even us, all this uh, end of time scenario is in our scripture, but what is the solution for it, right? So we must find a solution to be able to, to, to do it together. Uh, and that's what we're doing. We're now focused on solutions. So be part of our community where we're looking at solutions or be part of any community that you feel that you align with uh, that focus on solution. Then you'll be able to find any kind of, uh, 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 any if you have any problem and challenges, that community will be there for us to, 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 to find out the solutions to any kind of uh, challenges and problems that we have, right? Okay, so what, uh, what we're going to do now is we actually, this, uh, month is actually our two-year anniversary of our love and respect transforms conscious business community. So what we're doing now is we're actually having a, a special anniversary offer, right? Uh, people who join our um, uh, membership, which is at ninety-nine US dollars a month, right? They will get one is they will get all the training for if they want to increase the income, they want to uh, grow their business. They have that. They have that uh, training. But at the same time, we're giving this sustainable lifestyle program for free for one whole year worth about $1,188, uh, right? You, but you must make a commitment to sign up in the next 24 hours or you let us know that you want to commit something, then we can work something out. But you must, you must know that you, you want to commit, right? And then uh, okay, I just list down like some of the things that we offer in our conscious business uh, community that, that you can also work on yourself. It's not just about business, but it's about uh, wealth consciousness, money mindset. Uh, our own personal internal strength, you know, so we have a lot of these things like, okay, for example, uh, for our business community, we have a one a month business uh, personal growth huddle where our members come, they get to share their challenges, uh, they share their ideas as well, and we also find solutions together. Then every month, we'll have a workshop on different areas of business and personal growth, like example, I mentioned just now, money mindset, uh, marketing, communication and also social impact creation like we are as a community right of business, conscious business owners right we're not just about making money making profit but we also want to be able to help other people in need like for us we focus a lot on refugees we have a business mentorship for refugees so any uh, people who join our community we also will sponsor a refugee to be part of our program uh, as a part of our community as well right and then we have a uh, very regular meetups before this, it was very offline, and then now we are moving to online. So now, because of the COVID, has actually become better, right? We're going to do a hybrid of offline and online, so you can join our event if you're in KL. You can join our offline event, but if you're not, you can join our online event where we can actually from anywhere in the world you can actually join our event. Uh, we also have a one jumpstart call and orientation. Whoever joins, they're not alone. We actually have a uh, one call, one hour with them to actually see what they want to do, like what is their strategy, what they plan to do as an income, uh, 
income in business or whatever they we will work out a strategy for them so they can move forward right we also have a website where we have different areas the four areas of business where they can assess all the our past uh, recordings of our workshop and a uh, new things that's coming up they have access to that as well and also we also have a whatsapp and online group support where if they need any help for example they have watched uh, the attended workshop but they, they like you don't know what to do what you have some questions you also can ask in the whatsapp group and we will uh, do our best to answer right so that is the, the conscious uh, men, business mentorship part and we also offering the sustainability lifestyle program which uh, after july is going to be uh, charged separately it's not going to be the same anymore but for only for this uh, this for for of you who attended this program we're going to give a one for one that means you join the 99 us dollars membership you will get this sustainable program for free for one whole year right so it, we also will have the the, the huddles the sustainable lifestyle huddle where you can ask anything on sustainability uh, with our the people that we will mention just now, uh, Nazir, Ashraf, uh, Dr. Isan, and also Ivan, right? And then we're going to have uh, uh, different workshops by, by them as well, talking about different areas. And then uh, you also will have a support group in our online community and WhatsApp support group. And also, uh, yeah, this is the most exciting part is we, we're going to have our, our sustainable retreat uh, visit to our, uh, and also visit to our DSRU land on from the 2nd to the 4th of July. Usually in the past, we charge retreat separately. We will have like maybe 400 to 500 US dollars just for the retreat. So whoever joined this program is actually included inside as well, but only it's not the transport, uh, food and beverage and accommodation, not, it's not included. You have to pay yourself, but for the training itself, it's actually uh, included in the program. So you don't have to pay for the program. You just make yourself there. And then we, we will even bring you to the land. We able to see the land yourself. And a lot of people who actually uh, like Dr. Jali and Tim and uh, and Fisby and few other people who went to the land, they said, "Oh, this land is so amazing. But we have so there can be so many uh, potential on the land." And to tell you the truth, right, we have access to even more land, but we're not gonna go to the other land until we have done something with them. We have built a proper system where we can people can benefit. Because no point of opening many many lands, but there's no there's no work, there's no uh, impact that has on it. So what we do in the future is build this land as a social as a business sustainable business model why it's good then we can we can use it for other uh, lands as well right so now maybe i will uh, pass open it for q and a and also maybe mushida or any of you want to share anything or mushida want to share something you can uh, can share as well right thank you for your uh, patience and your participation yeah yeah so, so any, any questions, questions at this point, point? Uh, sorry, Zio, I need to move first. We need to take my lunch soon. Okay. Can I take my lunch? Okay. Yeah. So anybody has any other questions or uh, sharing? Yeah, that's right. Marwan said, apart from politics, allowing people to share in the work and economy does help to produce outcomes deterring people from contribution in a society out of fear of losing job opportunity is not going to improve the working ethics and will just lead to people becoming lazy yes that's why that's why we believe a lot in exchange of energy it's not just like one you know everything free 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 there must be some exchange of energy yeah and that's how like even in uh, impact you know when i create uh when we want to create impact right it's like um, how much change have we, how much transformation have we given giving food to the poor? And then after that, all right, so how many of them actually stopped being poor? Yeah. Not many. Yeah. Yeah. For us, it's the impact. Yeah, you, we want to make changes, not just like keeping keeping things as the way it yeah, is, you know, cool. firefighting and all that. Of course, yeah. lives have to be saved. Very important, yeah. you know, uh, life and death issues, things like that. But keep that minimal. That one is always... Yeah, teach them how to fish. Exactly. Yeah, what, one more thing I want to add is um, the the land is we also going to use to help uh, low income and refugees to actually work there as well. Once the place is set up, right? If they are into farming, into uh, horses, and they can actually stay uh, on, on the land or somewhere nearby first before the house is built. Then they also can work there. And then we also will give them uh, uh, fair wages to, to be able to stay there. And we eventually in the next one year, so we also going to move there ourselves as well so yeah, so that is a, one of our social project uh, to help the low income and refugee not just about ourselves and, and for ourselves but it's also helping people who are marginalized 
to also be part of the project as well. Yeah. yeah. So if any, any of you are interested also to create money, right? Um, if let's say you come in as an investor, you say, okay, I, I want to see, you know, if I were to invest in the land, uh, what can I get from it? We can, we can have a discussion on yeah. the ways that you can actually benefit even as an investor or somebody who, who invests in the land and vegetation because you know where Desaru, Desaru is? It's right next to the, the beach hotels that is all the five-star hotels yeah. and they, the hotels would require food, right? They require vegetables and and all of those things so you, you can have a way to supply and create income for yourself as well and we will can we can share that with you as well on a separate basis if any of you would say like you know how can i invest uh, in in the land and and be able to earn money at the same time and that's one way of also doing it so there's a lot of win-win in this land it's not just um, in terms of uh, facing food crisis, uh, some people saying, oh, I'm fine, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't really need to eat chicken and or whatever, you know, I can eat whatever I have at, at, at my home, that's fine. But if you're look, looking to grow your incomes, you want to see something that uh, make your money grow, this is also something that uh, you might want to address, uh, so uh, uh, talk to us on. So it's a lot of ways that you can come in as well. If you want to see something like, if you want to say something like, oh, I want my children to learn horseback riding or experience horses, or I have a, uh, uh, some children who are facing some um, challenges and, you know, uh, I want to see how um, therapeutic horses can be, also talk to us. So there are very different ways as well that you can you can also be a part of this community. Yeah. So um, with that, I think um, the, the best is the community. You can come in, there's so much learning that you can get and there's so many things that you can apply and you also be part of our network where we can, you know, um, possibly work with you and, and, and see how we can support one another. Yeah. Let me just, I just put the link there. Anybody if you're interested to, uh, hang, I'll put the link inside the thing. Then you can, uh, you can just see what the, what is offered, right? Let me just put the link there. Okay, I just put the link here. You just, you just click on the link. Whoever is not part of community can put at the link and then just see what we offer. Then you can decide in the next 24 hours if you want to be part of the online community first and then eventually into the uh, into the land community yeah yeah all right so yeah, let's, take a photo. let's take a photo whoever can open your video yeah we can take a photo yeah okay there you are yeah. yay yay Hariati. Okay, Where's Nora Isha? Okay, all right. One, two, three. Okay. My cam device has issue, Allah. <laughs> Alina, if not, can see you. All right, never mind. Ah, Nora Isha is here. Okay, come and take photo. Kai, next time, buka camera. Want to see your beautiful face. Okay, one, two, three. Ding! Okay, good. Yay! Yeah, all right, nice to meet all of you. Keep in touch with us. Um, Encik Rahman, Lina, uh, and all the other people here just now. Okay, Ian is a friend. Okay, bye. Assalamualaikum. Bye, everyone.